Well, let's get more on the G7. Sajiro Takashita joins us now for some more analysis. He's Professor of Management and Information at the University of Shizuoka. Uh, Dr. Sajiro, many thanks for joining us. Let's start with global growth because that is the priority, one of the priorities of the G7. Can they actually work together to boost global growth? Because they don't actually see eye to eye when it comes to policy, do they? <sighs> Unfortunately not, but at the same time, uh, what Mr. Abe and uh, the other members are trying to agree on is that they agree that there is a problem. Let's face it, look at Japan, for example. They've been going for these low interest rate policies, Europeans as well. And the question is, well, has it worked? And we can clearly see that it has not worked. And at the same time, we're seeing problems in emerging nations as well. The commodity prices are low. We have all these mounting problems which could possibly trigger another very negative issues globally, uh, especially with the rise of this protectionism that might be taking place uh, with populism going everywhere. So obviously, um, even though there's a lot of disagreements, as you point out, structurally, uh, to at least have a consensus that they do have possibly a big problem ahead of them, I think is a very important thing to agree on. I'm just going to refer to a live shot we've got, Shinzo Abe welcoming uh, G7 leaders for dinner, I believe. Now, we know China is conspicuously absent uh, from the G7, uh, despite having an economy that is larger than those of Japan, Germany and the UK combined. Where do the G7 stand on China? Do they see it as a, uh, an opportunity or is it definitely a threat? Well, it is basically a situation where it is a wonderful opportunity that's been wasted by the policies of China. Uh, it's very clear that their aggression isn't doing any of us any good. Uh, for example, if you look at foreign direct investment by the Japanese companies, it's dropped substantially because people are starting to understand that there's a country risk involved on the political side. And basically, uh, you know, their aggression that they're showing to the South Sea certainly is putting a very much of a negative, unnecessary spin. And basically, for G7 to agree that this should be worded off is certainly one, uh, although it's a political issue, it will be directly correlated to the economic issues going ahead. Now, we know South China Sea, uh, as a discussion point, has already come up. Obama mentioned it uh, just half an hour ago. What are they likely to, uh, to what sort of statements or action are they going to announce on South China, do you think? Well, I think uh, they will re-identify that uh, uh, they're putting a strong scrum towards the possible imperialism type of action that the Chinese government is taking um, um, uh, to show that, you know, they're showing uh, signs of uh, uh, solidity, I think is a very important thing to basically clearly note that they wouldn't just let go of this. Uh, it's very, very clear that, you know, China won't be backing off. Uh, but at the same time, to a stance that we wouldn't be forgiving such stance, I think is a very, very important message to be had to China. To say that, you know, they're just together uh, trying to ward this uh, problem off is, I think, a very important factor as well. Okay, Dr. Sajiro Takashita, many thanks for your time joining us live there.